Good morning, everyone. We're here to uh, launch the National Anti-Racism Strategy, a very important thing for the whole of the community of Australia. I congratulate you for all coming here today to do something about supporting people from all cultures, all nations and all backgrounds in their endeavours to have a safe, uh, respectable life here in Australia um, and are then uh, able to contribute as citizens to the well-being of all. Uh, I do like talking to, to my colleagues and just everybody about racism in Australia because I think it's interesting. You're always going to get hilarious responses every time a person of colour talks or complains about racism in Australia. White people always say something like, oh, Nazim, you see, you just don't understand Australian history. I think you just don't understand how things have always worked here. You see, everybody had it tough. Everybody had it tough when the Greeks and Italians came here. They had it tough when the Asians and Vietnamese came here. They had it tough. So, you see, Nazim, um, it's just your turn. It's just <laughs> your turn. Which is great, but um, that's not a comforting story. Uh, that's a story about a society that doesn't know how to stop being racist. Our readiness to acknowledge and address racism, just like any other injustice, shows that we're setting our sights on greater possibilities. It recognises that discrimination costs us financially and culturally, that when parts of our community are locked out, we all lose. Now, the spectrum of people here today demonstrates that we are ready to talk about racism and to do so in a way that builds a better future. Racism is a curb on our potential and on our full humanity. It holds us back, it slows us down, and it stops us bringing the best talent to the table. Let's not shirk from this one. Let's use our talents not only to call racism when we see it, but to envisage a nation beyond it. Nina and I believe that racism is most prevalent in the media, not necessarily in our schools. So we both think that we have a personal responsibility to go and find the facts from what we're being presented by the media. I think we all, everyone in this room, um, has a personal obligation in itself to not only increase awareness, but call racism out as you see it. Um, I think being a bystander as well to racism is just as important. I think everyone has an obligation to say, no, that's not acceptable and this is why. Racism has no role to play in Australian businesses. Many employers are striving to be employer of choice and cultural diversity is an extremely important element in achieving that status. There is no place for racism. I think this is a fantastic opportunity for us. I mean, as you said, we have two million members. We have um, about 130,000 activists in our networks. And it's campaigns like this that really help us get messages out to those people so that we can, uh, you know, spread the word about this and actually do something really tangible. It's great. Unfortunately, whether overt or subtle, racism still occurs in our communities. And while the vast majority of Australians embrace what it means to be Australian and reject racism in all its forms, there are still pockets of racism, as we've acknowledged this morning, uh, and, and discrimination in our communities. And as a government, we're committed to combating racism. As a community, we don't tolerate racism and we have laws that prohibit discrimination. And this new strategy is about complementing these measures and encouraging the community at a grassroots level to challenge racism and end discrimination wherever it occurs. Oh, well, I guess we can't shy away from racism. It happens um, every day. And, um, you know, the great thing about me in my field, uh, which is AFL, I can stand up to it and, you know, I'd go to people. Um, I'm not going to let this happen. And it's definitely affecting young people when it happens in our community. So it's, it's evident, but I think we... Um, I'm pretty sure we can stop it. Yeah, I think it is really important. I think the AFL has been a leader in, uh, in that, in our um, sphere, and we hold great influence over, I suppose, the junior level. So the, the more that we can actually um, stamp it out, encourage it, you know, I'm glad that, you know, Mad Jack, when he was um, racially vilified by a spectator, he felt comfortable to actually come out and, and stand up against it and, you know, really proud of, of what he did and, and proud of the club because they really got behind him and supported him and, um, you know, that's what it's all about. My parents just instilled the strength in me and just said, you know, no, you know, there's, 
It's if, if people are going to judge you not based on your personality, your character, your 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 merit, your your heart, your soul, what you've got inside, they're just going to judge you based on your skin color and what cultural background you come from. Well, then you know they they they're not worth taking it. It's you know you got to give it back to them because I mean I remember my dad used to always say. All the white people in this country, they all came from England and Ireland and Scotland and Wales. You came from India, so what's the difference? You do, do you judge them because they're white? I say no. So then they, you say, you know, well, don't let them judge you because you're brown. In our city, we have over 200 different nationalities. We speak more than 230 different languages and dialects. We practice 105 different faiths. And yet we're very proud that we're one Melbourne. And the diversity and the tolerance that makes that true is exactly the opposite force to racism. When you see something like that happening, you do speak out. Now, you may confront it, you know, head on, as Sashin talks about, or you may do it in the way that Julian said, or you may do it in your own private way. But just don't be passive. Even if it's quiet and, and very personal, you know, call it. And I think that's the important thing to do. Now, as Minister, it's very close to me, it's very important. And I, and I think there are three ingredients that we need. First is legislation and we have got the legislation in place. The second ingredient is education, is educating people, making them aware of individuals, of the different cultures, of who we are. And the third ingredient, of course, is to monitor, not to become complacent. And we've got the uh, Chin Ten, who's the chairperson of, 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 of the VMC here, and his role is to make sure when it appears that we are informed so we can work with the people to make it stop. We are the biggest female team participant sport in the country. So we actually have 1.2 million participants in netball and they then affect families, mothers, brothers, sisters, and that's probably another 6 million. So that's getting up to about a third of the Australian population. So we think we can make a difference and we aim to have a safe, inclusive and fun environment for our players, umpires, coaches, and spectators. My first year when I first started playing uh, professional rugby in 1998 um, and we played against a lot of the South African teams and at, at that stage you know they were just coming out of apartheid and there was distinct discrimination against um, against a lot of the darker players and at times their own players were actually racially abusing them. I remember after the game our captain went up to their op op opposition captain and said look what you are doing what is happening in your team is unacceptable and so from my perspective as a leader, that's exactly how we should be behaving. It is really a triumph, I think, to show that so many people not only want their organisations involved but are prepared to come and tell their personal story about why they themselves uh, and in their organisations will actually stand up to racism. Australia has such a proud history of being able to cope with change, welcome people, whether it's through sport or politics or school, into the community. And we really need to now take the next steps, which is make sure that if we see something happening that we don't stand by. Racism, it stops with me. Racism, it stops with me. Racism, it stops with me. Racism,